Aren't these things lovely? Their scientific name is Ranunculus glabarimus, or something like that. Common name is sagebrush buttercup. They're some of the earliest bloomers here in our native plant garden at the Klamath County Museum. And we're always so happy to see them because they're you know, such a harbinger of spring. Just about three weeks ago, we had something like six, six inches of snow on the ground here. But as soon as the snow is gone, these things popped up and, and here they are blooming. Well, hey, I guess it's about time we should get to work here. Um, today we are um, producing video number three in our series to accompany our Photo of the Week program. As I mentioned before, this is where we select a photo from our collection uh, to feature. We post it on Facebook and uh, then we share the photo with the Herald and News and they publish it in uh, the Sunday paper in their uh, connections page, which we're really pleased with. So today we're going to um, give you a three-part outline. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is show you the photo for uh, Sunday, March 31st, 2019. And then we're going to head out to a spot where we're going to look for an old antique piece of equipment, the same type of equipment that shows up in our photo. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. We'll be headed to Ron and Kay Short's place. Uh, Ron is a third generation resident out on Short Road uh, near Henley. And he's got a cool piece of equipment for us to look at out there. And then we'll also talk with Michael Wakefield, who is a professional teamster. Uh, what that means is he drives a stagecoach for Wells Fargo and he'll give us some additional background on the equipment that we're going to talk about. So let's have a look at the photo. Our photo of the week for the week of Sunday March 31st 2019 shows a group of guys working on a road somewhere here in Klamath County. So as we look at this photo here's what we see in the photo. Uh, first of all, we see several teams of horses and a few mules. We can see that, uh, that they're working on a road that's a pretty prominent road. We can tell by the fences along the edge of the road and uh, by the power lines on one side of the road and the telephone wires on the other side of the road that this is a fairly major road and it's a nice wide road. Down in the right hand corner we can see the number 2630. We recognize that handwriting, that scribbling handwriting there is uh, the handwriting of Maud Baldwin, a female photographer who worked here in the late 1800s and early 1900s. So that helps give us a date for this photo. There's just one thing that we still don't know about this photo. We're not sure exactly where in the Klamath Basin it was taken. In the background on the, lower, uh, on the far right hand side of the picture we can see a hill in the background and that's about the only landmark that would give us a clue. We still don't have that figured out. Where is that hill and where was this road being built? But here's what we want to really focus on. We want to make a connection with the men that you see in this photo. It looks like there's uh, several teams of horses and in the back uh, there we see the long-eared mules and we can see the scrapers that they were using to pick up dirt in one area and uh, carry it along to a low spot and then dump their load to help fill in the, the low ground. And in the foreground on the right hand side we can see uh, what looks like a fairly good sized gentleman with a vest. Um, we're guessing he was probably the foreman of the crew. So what we're going to do now is head out to uh, Short Road near Henley. We're out here by uh, Henley Elementary and Henley uh, High School complex at the home of Ron and Kay Short. Uh, Ron here has a scraper just like the one that we're going to be looking at in our photo of the week. Uh, this uh, scraper, Ron, I think you said belonged to your uh, granddad back in uh, the early 1900s? Yes, yes, this is my grandfather's. <clears throat> and it's been on this property you know, as long as I can remember. So you think your granddad might have actually used this very scraper right out here on uh, the highway beside Henley? I wouldn't be surprised. I think he probably did. Now, your granddad, you say, uh, worked on roads? Well, he, uh, as I understand it, he was a county road supervisor for a while and uh, helped work build the uh, Highway 39. We have some pictures if I can find them, that uh, show him and his road crew. And I would assume that this was used on that as well as around the farm here. This thing is a lot bigger 
now that I see it here than it looks in the photos, I have to tell you. It does. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and uh, uh, do you think your granddad might actually be in that photo? Possibly. That one fellow in front uh, looks like my remembrance of him and the way he was dressed. And yeah, the boots and everything. And everything, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And he was, he was a big fellow. He was a husky guy. Well, Ron, thanks for letting us come out and uh, have a look at this uh, piece of equipment today. It's, uh, it's a real beaut. Well, you're welcome any time. So, Michael, uh, you have uh, spent many years working with teams of horses, doing all kinds of different things, mainly <laughs> driving wagons and so forth, right? Yes, farm but, stuff. Yeah, okay. But uh, uh, this, would you say, is typical of the uh, type of uh, scrapers they would have used for road construction and lots of other jobs? Yeah. It's very similar to the Fresno scraper that's in your picture. And the feature that points it out is these elliptical runners because now we can elevate the back end by some device. Uh, in the Fresno scraper, it's just a long pole that sticks back to the driver, <clears throat> and you're able to change how much it digs and how much it leaves. And that's the real advantage it had over to what we had before, which, can you, can you get back here and get the slip into the picture? Let's reposition to common slip which most farmers would have had and it, on the front end you can attach a single tree for a single horse or a double tree for two in rough going and it had handles out the back so a farmer with a set of plow reins would come along and dig but then you had to trip it so it left everything in a big lump. The Fresno scraper and, and box scrapers of this design had elliptical runners so that you could change the angle of dig and the angle of, of uh, leaving stuff behind so you could actually do leveling. This just moved dirt from one place to another and then you had to come along with a grader or some other device to get the final grade. You know many of the streets, roads and highways that we travel on these days have been modernized over the years. They've been widened and straightened and leveled and that's great. Modern highways are pretty convenient and they're nice and safe. But I like to think about some of the roads that we travel on today that haven't really seen much change in the last, say, 150 years. Uh, we're looking at one right here. Uh, this is Highway 140 east of Klamath Falls. We're about halfway between the Lakeview Merrill Junction and Olean Gap that you can see there in the distance. Some years ago, we discovered in the archives an 1885 survey of the Linkville to Bonanza Road, 1885. So we took that map and we overlaid it a Google map image. <clears throat> you can see here that uh, the survey was pretty much, and sure enough, you can see that uh, this road has not changed much in the 130 some years since the 1885 survey. It's pretty impressive to think about how accurate that survey was back in 1885. And I just get a kick out of thinking about how little this road has changed. We still travel up and down over the same hills and go around the same curves. It looks like they pretty much just made a beeline for uh, Olean Gap there. Now, this is just conjecture on my part. I don't have any uh, research to back this up at the moment, but I like to think that the road was probably already here when the surveyor went through in 1885. And I also like to think that whenever they came through with the first wagons, they probably just followed a footpath that had been uh, trodden by Native Americans for who knows how many generations. <laughs>